This is Rich from Eat Sleep 360 and today we're going to look at Insta360 Studio for beginners. We're going to look at the basics of how you use it so you can just get on and start editing. If you're new to this channel this is the place to come to learn and perfect your 360 videos and 360 photos. So please remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be told straight away when I launch a new video. So I'm a freelance cameraman and cameras are my main thing but I do edit my show reels and I do edit the YouTube videos that you're watching. I do know what it's like when you're sat in front of a new piece of editing software or any piece of editing software if you're new to editing. It pretty much does your head in and you're sat there and you don't know where to start with it all. In these editing tutorials for beginners I want to strip it right back to the basics and I want to make sure that anyone can look at these videos and they can start editing. The thing with traditional videos you can point and shoot, you can watch it back and you're pretty much happy with your home video but with 360 videos you have to do some sort of editing if you're going to make any sense of what you've shot. So I want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to start editing their 360 videos. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is find the clip that you want to edit. So go to the top left hand corner, select file and then go to the folder where your clip is stored and then open the file, open the clip up. So the name of the clip will appear under footages but the actual clip itself will appear in the middle screen so this is your viewing window. The majority of the things down the right hand side of the frame you can pretty much ignore at this stage. So down the bottom of the screen we've got our timeline and that runs from zero right up to how many minutes of footage that you've recorded. And at the moment you can see that the footage that I've recorded is too long for the timeline so I can't actually see the end of it. So to correct that we need to go to the right hand side of the screen at the bottom and we use this little slider here to reduce the size of the timeline. So now that I've reduced the size of the timeline, you can see that my footage runs from 0 to 2 minutes 24, roughly. So when you open up your clip, it's brought into the viewing window in equi-rectangular, so you can see both lenses. But with this footage, because we're going to change the angle and the field of view, we want to go into free capture, which is next to view. If we go down to the aspect ratio, which is the size of the frame that you're seeing, so you see here it says 16 by 9. This allows us to change the size of our frame. So the three frames that you really need to know about are 1 by 1, which would be for Instagram, 9 by 16, which would be for Instagram stories, and then 16 by 9, which is our classic TV screen look, which you'd use for YouTube. For some reason on this screen recording, when I select the 16 by 9, it doesn't show the upper menu, which would usually appear on the screen, which would give you all your different aspect ratios. So for this video, I'm just going to select 16 by 9. And next to the 16 by 9 icon, you've got a little camera icon. Now if we select this icon, what this does, it, it captures a screen grab of what you can see in the viewing window. So you click the camera icon and then you can choose which folder you want to save it in. A bit further to the left, we've got this icon here and this indicates where we want our clip to begin. And then this icon indicates where we want the clip to end. But you can also drag these two points on the timeline to where you want the clip to start and begin as well. So it's up to you which one you want to use. So this vertical line on the timeline with the arrow on the top, this indicates which part of the clip we are looking at. Now if we hover the mouse over that line and we hold down the left mouse button, we can then drag that line to whatever point of the clip that we want to look at. In this instance, I want to drag this line to the start of where I start cycling. I then click on the in point icon. And then in this video, I want the video to end just before I stop cycling. So I'll drag the vertical line to the end of the clip and then I will mark the out point. So now we've marked the in point and the out point of our clip. So we know that this is the whole clip that we're going to work with. So the next thing we want to do is we want to put in a keyframe. Now when we click a keyframe, that indicates that at that point in the video, we want the video to do something. So we're telling the software to change an angle, change the perspective. So we're going to click this little yellow icon here, which is like a little target, and then that will put a keyframe on the timeline. So now you've selected that keyframe and told the software that you want the picture to look different at that point, we can now go to the bottom left hand side of the screen and select how we want that picture to look. So we can choose between fisheye or tiny planet mode, sphere mode or standard video mode. For this tutorial we're going to choose tiny planet mode. 
So we select Tiny Planet, then we can use the mouse on the main viewing screen to move the image around to whatever point that we want. Now if we want to go even wider so that the image gets even smaller, we can use the FOV, Field of View option here and come out even further. Once you're happy with the framing, then press play. When you want to make your next change, then click the keyframe icon again. So once you've clicked the keyframe, then select Tiny Planet or whichever angle that you want to choose. Readjust your frame size and then press play once more. Input another keyframe and so on and so on. So for this keyframe, I'm going to stay in tiny planet mode, but I'm going to change it to an inverted planet. So I just use the mouse to drag the picture down and invert the image. So once we've put all our keyframes in and we're happy with how the shot changes from one angle to another angle, we can now look at how those shots transition from one to another. So to do that, we click on the line in between the keyframes. Once you've clicked on it, it'll turn red. We then go over to the Transitions tab on the bottom left-hand corner and we can select between all of these different transitions. We've got smooth dissolve, we've got slip in, fade out, fade in, slip out, slip in, slip out, and fade in, fade out, or none. So let's just choose a different one for each section. But when you start editing your own stuff, these transitions are really easy to change, so just have a look and see what looks best. Now we've got all our transitions in, we've got all our keyframes in, so we can play the clip and see if we're happy with it. So once you're happy with your clip, you've got all your transitions and all your keyframes in place and you've played it through, just go to File and export the clip and save it in whichever folder you want. So this software does have its limitations. If you want to take this editing a stage further and speed clips up, slow things down, add music, add sound effects, merge clips together, then you'll need to import this footage now into something like Premiere. Um, I've got some tutorials coming up soon, so please hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you'll know straight away when I've uploaded them. So I hope that's given you a good overview of Insta360 Studio and now you're more confident you can get on and start editing your 360 videos. Please do comment below and tell me if there's anything that I've missed or made too complicated or you want a better explanation of because I want you to get out there and start editing. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I do intend to make more videos on 360 editing, so please hit the subscribe button. I look forward to reading your comments and I look forward to seeing some of the stuff that you've edited and I'll see you on the next video.